Okay, in this video I want to talk about what's called Green's Theorem. And what's Green, what Green's Theorem says is, it says we have a, a positively oriented, piecewise, smooth, simple, closed curve in the plane, and D is going to be the region enclosed by that curve. So we've got some little um, simple closed curve. Positively oriented just means that you're traveling around the curve counterclockwise in the plane. And it says, if our functions p and q have continuous partial derivatives on an open region that contains d, it says if we integrate this line integral, this notation with the little circle on the integral, um, that means that the curve is positively oriented, because we could travel the other direction and then something different happens. So this is positively oriented. It says what you can do is you can turn this line integral into a double integral. Um, just kind of a normal double integral that involves the partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y. So I'm just going to do a basic kind of computational example, show you how it works, um, not go into all the nitty gritty of the details here. Um, again, you know, any calculus book will discuss the notion of positively oriented, um, excuse me, um, closed curves. Maybe I'll do another video where I kind of talk about the hypothesis. But in this, I just want to compute it real quick. Okay, so we're going to evaluate this line integral. Um, I'll put the little circle on there again to emphasize that it's positively oriented. We're going to integrate the line integral x dx minus x squared y squared dy. And C is going to be the triangle with vertices at 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. Again, positively oriented. So usually what I do is I just sketch the region real quick. So 0, 0, 0, 1 would put us up here. Um, 1, 1 will put us over here. And it says that it's the region enclosed by... Um, the triangle formed by those vertices. Again, it's positively oriented. Um, you can check that this has continuous partial derivatives, but this is our region D, so we're going to use Green's theorem here, and it says all that we do is we just go from our line integral to a double integral. It says we take the partial of Q with respect to X minus the partial of P with respect to Y Okay, over our region. And again, just the way we had things labeled a second ago, whatever's in front of the x, the dx, excuse me, that's our p function. And whatever's in front of the dy, that's going to be our q function. So make sure that you include the sign there. Okay, so we'll, we'll figure out the limits of integration here in just a second. But it says if we take the partial of q with respect to x, to me it looks like we're going to get negative 2x y squared minus, then we take the partial of p with respect to y, but there we treat x like a constant, so that actually just becomes 0. I think I'm going to integrate this one with respect to y first, and then with respect to x. So remember, if we integrate with respect to y, our lower limit of integration is whatever the bottom curve is. And since it's just a line that goes from 0 to 0, 0 to 1, 1, this is simply going to be the curve y equals x. So we'll be integrating from y equals x. The top part is the horizontal line, y equals 1. Then our x values just range from 0 to 1. So now we've used Green's theorem to set up the double integral that we have to calculate. Um, so again, we've turned a line integral into just a, a double integral. So hopefully this one won't be too bad to compute. So let's just go ahead and grind it out here. We'll have to integrate from 0 to 1. You've got to integrate negative 2x squared, excuse me, negative 2xy squared with respect to y. So we treat the negative 2x like a constant. When we integrate, we'll get y cubed over 3. We'll have to evaluate that from y equals x to y equals 1 and then integrate all that with respect to x. So again, not too bad, just a little tedious. Um, if we plug in the upper limit, y equals 1, we'll get 1 cubed, which is 1, so we'll get negative 2x over 3. Um, we'll subtract away the lower limit, which will give us um, a positive. When we plug in x, it looks like we'll get 2x to the fourth, again, over 3. And that's what we have to integrate now with respect to x. So pretty close. Let me give myself some more room here real quick. Um, this is about as easy as an integral is going to 
is going to happen in a, a Calc 3 class, I think. So if we integrate this last integral um, with respect to x, um, so let me just go ahead and do it in one fell swoop. Um, I guess, let's see, so the negative 2 thirds looks like we'll get, um, so I always just do it, so negative 2 thirds will get x squared over 2 plus 2 thirds x to the fifth over 5. We have to evaluate that from 0 to 1, so okay, the 2's cancel. So that's negative x squared over 3. It looks like uh, 2 over 15 x to the fifth from 0 to 1. So if we plug in our upper limit 1, we have to square the 1 first, so we'll get 1 squared, we'll get negative 1 third, plus 2 over 15, 1 to the fifth being 1. And then our lower limit, we're just going to get a bunch of zeros. So let's see, if we get common denominators, top and bottom by 5, we'd have negative 5 plus 2, which would be negative 3 over 15, or the value um, negative 1 fifth. So again, basic idea, it says in some cases you can turn line integrals into double integrals is all it says. And a lot of times evaluating a double integral m might be a little bit easier than evaluating a line integral. That way you don't have to figure out um, usually a good parametric representation. I think they're just a little bit more straightforward. So, all right, I hope this example helps, make some sense. I'm going to do definitely a more complicated one, um, perhaps where you have to use polar coordinates to integrate but um, that'll be in another video. So feel free to make comments and questions, and good luck out there.